this is one of the most important moments in our trip, in our visit to uh, a state program, is to recognize the contributions to pro bono work that our private, that the members of our bar provide selflessly across their communities. And as many of you, we just heard that net, next week is National Pro Bono Celebration Week, and uh, this year's theme, Law in Everyday Life. ABA President Deborah Enix Ross explains that that goal is to highlight how legal assistance can help low-income and other marginalized individuals in all aspects of life. This, of course, is what LSC grantees and pro bono lawyers do every day all across the nation. And this afternoon, we recognize four of these volunteer heroes for their outstanding contributions to Kansas Legal Services. And these pro bono service awards reflect LSC's significant commitment to pro bono service, evidenced by our Pro Bono Task Force, and our Pro Bono Innovation Fund Grants Program. Just a month ago, we awarded grants from this program totaling $4.75 million to 15 legal aid organizations across the country. This is the ninth year that Congress has designated funds for OSC's Pro Bono Grants Program, and since 2014, we've awarded 121 grants totaling more than $35 million. And these grants support projects offering innovative, replicable solutions to persistent challenges in the current pro bono delivery system. And this year's awards establish establishing new community partnerships, utilizing technology in innovative ways, better incentivizing private attorneys to volunteer, and increasing efficiency through standardized processes and other initiatives. And as you know, I think you know well, as we work hard to promote pro bono, pro bono must be supported by properly funded, structured legal aid programs, screening cases, and providing essential services to those volunteer lawyers. Pro bono lawyers working in conjunction with lawyers at LSC-funded organizations across the country have helped tens of thousands of people every year. And in providing such pro bono service, the lawyers fulfill a fundamental responsibility of our profession. As former Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor powerfully observed, public service marks the difference between a business and a profession. While a business can afford to focus solely on profits, a profession cannot. It must devote itself first to the community it is responsible to serve. I can imagine no greater duty than fulfilling this obligation, and I can imagine no greater pleasure. And Justice O'Connor's most recent successor, Justice Katanji Brown Jackson, notes that pro bono service goes beyond professional obligations to civic duty by supporting the rule of law. The rule of law, she said, to which we are all committed, cannot flourish under the, unless the legal system is fair and open to all. That means that everyone's entitled to have effective representation. Pro bono legal service is both a good skill-building opportunity and a high calling because our justice system can only function properly if talented lawyers like you, she was talking to the recent graduates at the University of Pennsylvania 20, just a year ago, step, that she said, you lawyers like you step up and do the work of representing people who do not have the financial means with just as much zeal as the work that is done for paying clients. Well, stepping up is what jurists we're honoring this afternoon are all about. And as I said uh, earlier today, I guess it was last night, the LSC board, well, 
Matt and others may have different views about this, but we only travel to visit three programs a year. So that means we're not going to be back here making pro bono awards very often. In fact, it'll be many, many years. So that makes the awards we are giving today all the more special. And it is now my privilege to ask my colleagues to come up and help recognize the extraordinarily deserving recipients for their service. Thank you very much. And Robert, come on up and we'll give the first award. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, it's always nice to know how you feel about these topics. Uh, you express them with such vigor and commitment and dedication. Um, I'm always inspired after I hear you speak, even though I hear you speak a lot. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things that is critically important to what we do is that we empower the next generation because our time is limited and the window closes. To hear Nick and Morgan talk about what they do and the way they do it as new lawyers tells us that the legal profession is in good hands. So thank you for your participation. <clears throat> Listen, when Father Pius lays hands and introduces you, <clears throat> it is hard to follow. But I've got to follow him in recognizing our Chief Justice. Um, and he said it beautifully from that part of the country that is practical that is receptive, that expresses hospitality. I said, my God, the Chief Justice is from Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> Actually, I am Kansas on the East Coast. <laughs> and and um, Justice Luckert, one of the things that you said was so important, um, and it, it, it contributes to the activities that you've engaged in as Chief Justice. You talked about removing intimidation and, and eliminating geographical barriers, both of the things that uh, took place during the COVID crisis were critical uh, to making that happen. Um, your leadership is an example of strong, compassionate resolve. And we want to honor you for that today. Uh, the Chief Justice was appointed uh, by uh, Governor Bill Gross in 2003 and became Chief Justice in 2019. Um, it, her role was vital in removing the barriers in providing pro bono services uh, by Kansas lawyers in modifying the, uh, uh, the conflict rules under the rule of professional conduct 6.5. You know, that is a way of eliminating uh, that barrier of intimidation that people can get representation quickly and effectively. And then your continued focus in making sure that Judge O'Grady's contribution was codified and put, not really not codified, I guess we codified the, the, the rules of professional conduct, but to establish and put in place the portal that allowed people to make sure that domestic violence didn't overtake them, that they had a place to go. And we never realized um, that while as as individuals in a society that had means, we were able to pivot during COVID. But if you're without means and without access, you are absolutely prohibited 
from finding a way to resolve your conflicts. That leadership is now a national movement. And so Kansas starts a lot of things. One of them is this idea of finding ways for people to improve their lives, gain access to the courts, and resolve their conflicts in, an, in a very thoughtful but practical way. And so Chief Justice Luckert, for increasing access to justice in Kansas and for joining us this afternoon in behalf of all the Lindas. We honor you and ask you to join us at the podium to receive our congratulations and appreciation. Uh, it's often said amongst us who are familiar with the silver-tongued Robert Gray that whoever has to introduce after him drew the short straw. That's me. I'm Lori Mikva, uh, another member of the LSC's Board of Directors. I'm from Chicago, and it's my honor to present our next award to Martha J. Kaufman. Martha retired from her role as general counsel for the Kansas Office of Judicial Administration in 2020. She spent 30 years of her career working for the state in various roles and now dedicates much of her time to projects that seek to address unmet legal needs. As chair of the Kansas Bar Association's Access to Justice Committee, Martha is the one who spearheaded a change in Kansas Rule of Professional Conduct 6.5, uh, which pre previously required attorneys working with nonprofit or court programs uh, to do conflict checks and to uh, report those. Um, now, uh, attorneys working with court-based and legal aid organizations um, they can provide short-term limited legal services without this obstruction. And we keep hearing today what a game changer this is for Kansas. Uh, additionally, Martha is working to create a self-help center in the 7th Judicial District Courthouse near her home in Douglas County. And her colleagues say that when the center opens, Martha will be the very first attorney in line to volunteer to assist people in accessing the court. Um, she received both her BA and JD from University of Kansas and a master's from the University of Pittsburgh. Must be something wrong with the Kansas program. Um, and it's my pleasure to recognize Martha with this pro bono service award. Well, Lori, I think you're great, but I'm glad you drew the short straw. I don't like following Robert either. Um, <laughs> so my name is John Malcolm. I'm a member of the LSC board. I'm, I'm based in Washington, D.C., uh, and it's my privilege to present our next award to Matthew Ellis, who is the chief counsel of Coke Company's public sector and co-chair of their pro bono committee. Uh, Matt uh, holds a bachelor's of science degree from uh, Brigham Young University, and he got his Juris Doctorate from the University of Houston Law Center, uh, graduating, I guess, from Houston. He started out his legal career uh, in Texas, where he worked with the Dallas Volunteer Attorneys Program and the Innocence Project of Texas. In 2012, he moved to Kansas and accepted an in-house role with Coke Industries. When he heard five years later that Coke was launching a pro bono initiative, which I assume my, my friend Mark Holden probably had something to do with that, uh, he jumped at the chance to participate. In partnership with Kansas Legal Services, Coke's attorneys have provided volunteer services for several community legal aid clinics aimed at increasing access to justice for all Kansans, including clinics involving record expungement, which you just heard about through this terrific panel, uh, and also driver's license restoration. As co-chair of Koch's pro bono initiative, Matt has recruited uh, some 30 lawyers, which is the most number of, of volunteers participating in, in this sort of program so far. Uh, and together, those lawyers expunged 66 cases for 33 clients in Wichita this year. Uh, it is my privilege and my honor to present this award to Matt Ellis. Hi, I'm Abby Kuzma. I'm one of the board members as well. 
And I just wanted to say that we've been talking about pro bono, and I have personally experienced as a former executive director of a legal services program, the leveraging impact that pro bono has on a program. And so I just wanted to say it's a privilege for each of us to be here to to administer these awards because they are so important. And so it's so you need to understand how important it is for us to have you participating in the program. It makes all the difference. Um, so today I have the privilege of it's uh, presenting our last award of the day to Jeffrey uh, Jordan, who uh, is a partner at Fulton Siefkin. Uh, uh, Jeff chairs the Ethics Committee at Fulton Siefkin, which is Kansas's largest law firm. He also chairs the Wichita Bar Association Ethics and Grievance Committee. Until the recent changes, which we've heard and not a lot about here, uh, to Kansas's Rule of Professional Conduct 6.5, the complicated process that lawyers and their firms were required to undergo prior to providing pro bono services in off-site settings often prevented them from being able to volunteer at all. When the state Supreme Court changed the rule on November 29 and Kansas Legal Services needed volunteers for a driver's license restoration clinic in Wichita on December 1, Jeff mobilized immediately to ensure that several associates on, in his firm could participate. And that kind of immediate action is so important in a program. And you've got things ready to go, and having the pro bono attorneys there to participate makes all the difference. Nearly 100 people who sought reinstatement of their driver's licenses received services at the clinic that day, and Jeff's leadership at the Folston Seafton was instrumental in success of the event. Jeff received his BS from Wichita State University and his JD from the University of Kansas. I'm pleased to present this award to Jeff Jordan. Uh, please join me in a vigorous round of applause for Jeff Jordan and the three other award recipients that we have honored today.